One of the things Snowden exposed was a program called PRISM that gave the NSA direct access to companies like Apple, Google, and Microsoft. The Guardian revealed how large companies work closely with the NSA in return for payment of their compliance cost. The leaks also revealed that the U.S. did not target all foreign governments. Some actually cooperated with Washington. Britain helped the U.S. in monitoring other world leaders. Australia assisted in covert data collection. And Canada ran a two-month pilot program that tracked passengers' Wi-Fi communications at airports. Earlier this month, former Vice President Al Gore praised Snowden's efforts, saying the leaks have provided an important service. He added that the violation of constitutional rights by the U.S. government were far more serious than Snowden's actions. For more, I want to bring in Colleen Rowley, who's in Minneapolis. She's a retired FBI agent and whistleblower. She traveled to Moscow in October to give an integrity award to Edward Snowden, making her one of the first Americans to visit with him. And Philip Halloway, he's in Atlanta. He's the founder of Halloway Law Group and a former military attorney. Great to have you both with us. Great to be with you, Tom. Nice to be here. All right, so here we have a, a man, Ms. Rowley, who's accused of espionage for leaking secrets, yet he was honored <coughs> by a group of former... Uh, intelligence officials. In fact, you bestow that award. As a former federal agent, is he seen as a courageous whistleblower? Yes, I think so. Um, the, the award was based on a, the whistleblowing during the Vietnam War, where someone actually told the truth when West, Westmoreland, General Westmoreland, was telling the American people that the enemy troop strength was declining when in fact it was increasing. So in some cases, uh, officials do not want this kind of truth to get out because they want to control public opinion. The Espionage Act is an improper law because it is geared towards true spies, not whistleblowing. Espionage charges he could face. I'll ask you, Mr. Holloway, did Edward Snowden put our nation at risk? Absolutely, he put our nation at risk. You know, in America, we value our privacy so much that we enshrined it in our Constitution and we are protected uh, against unreasonable government intrusions into our homes, our persons, our papers and effects. So yes, this is something that has got Americans talking, but he's absolutely committed a crime. When you take our national security playbook, if you will, and you defect to China and then wind up in Russia and hand everything over to those foreign governments, absolutely it puts America at risk, and that is a crime. Ms. Rowley, why go to China, then Russia? Why not go through a normal chain of command? Exactly. Um, in fact, you that always was... can go through a normal chain of command. There are things that he could do. I guarantee you there's any number of congressmen or senators that would have loved to have sat down and talked to him in private, people that who themselves have security clearances. I had a security clearance. I wasn't free to go uh, take anything I knew to another country, and neither was he. All right, so Mr. Holloway, I'll let Ms. Rowley answer that. Yes, there are several, several things that were factually incorrect just now that Mr. Holloway said. One is that there is absolutely no indication that Edward Snowden turned anything over to the Russians. It's quite the opposite. Uh, they asked him, you know, he was maybe given the chance and he declined that chance. He's even criticized Putin recently. Um, so, in, in fact, uh, you know, if we're, if we're talking about strategic interests, uh, he's actually, uh, you know, a patriot and actually uh, siding on the side of democracy. And, and Mr. Holloway is correct that the Constitution does enshrine a right to privacy, a right to freedom of association, religion, speech. Um, Edward Snowden has upheld those uh, constitutional values. What the United States was doing was completely illegal. They were violating the Fourth Amendment, and, and judges have said so in the meantime. So, um, you know, we, we really need to look at the facts here instead of just listening to uh, people that but claim But, Ms. Rowley, do you think in any way that Edward Snowden compromised intelligence gathering? Absolutely not. The, the true, of course, criminals and terrorists are very well aware that they risk being monitored uh, by law enforcement. And they have all kinds of ways they try to avoid communicating, etc. We know that whole story from the bin Laden thing. Uh, but but um, the, the group of people that did not know they were being monitored, which are the innocent Americans, those were the people, we the people, who learned about this dragnet surveillance that's targeted innocent people and serves no purpose. Now, that can't possibly endanger national security. Mr. Holloway, did he commit treason? 
Well, I know that he's at least committed certain federal criminal violations. Whether it rises to the level of treason is arguable. I will agree, though, however, that what he has exposed is a framework where the government, without any authority, does in fact violate the Fourth Amendment. So I will agree that uh, he has done arguably a service to the public because uh, the modern day equivalent of our papers and our effects, of course, is our emails, it's our cell phone calls, it's our text messages, it's Instagram, it's Facebook, Twitter. All that stuff is the modern version of our papers and effects that are protected by the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. People have died for that right. And, you know, to that extent, to the extent that it's raised public awareness and has caused this discussion, yes, he's done a service. But he went about it the wrong way. You can't simply go to China and Russia and defect with national security materials and expect not to be charged with a crime. I'll let you answer in a moment, Mr. Riley. You bring up a very good point, Mr. Holloway. In fact, the NSA is collecting data on millions of Americans under a rule known as three hops. Hops referred to the degree of separation between a target and his or her associates. In fact, a Pew Research Center study found that the average adult Facebook user has 338 friends on the social network. So your friends, that's the first hop. The second hop takes in your friends' friends. On average, that creates a pool of about over 114,000 people. Three hops, or friends of friends of friends, takes that number to more than 38 million. The NSA could legally monitor everyone based on suspicion of a single person. In this day and age, Ms. Rowley, do we give up a certain right? You know, uh, if, if someone could show that this helped to actually detect and reduce terrorism, uh, I would be less adamant that we need to reform uh, this collected all uh, si situation right now. In all fairness to the NSA, it's, I wouldn't put the entire blame on the NSA officials after 9-11. Technology and the decreasing cost of not only monitoring all people, including innocent Americans, but storing that data is something that changed, and the law simply did not keep up with it. And then the other problem was this was all done in secrecy. So again, if, if we could show now the, the officials, the NSA and the CIA officials have not been able to show any uh, instance where this has actually worked to actually detect. In fact, we have many cases like the Boston bomber who, the, who were not detected through this massive dragnet surveillance. Mr. Holloway, former Vice President, as I mentioned, Al Gore said that Edward Snowden provided, quote, an important service in revealing the extent of data collection by U.S. intelligence officials. What do you make of the former Vice President's comments? And I think he also added to that, if I'm not mistaken, he said that that benefit or that service outweighed any danger or any damage that might have been done to our national security infrastructure. Sure. I don't know how you can actually come up to that uh, answer without knowing exactly how much damage he, he did to our national security infrastructure. So I don't know how you balance the equation. I do agree that it's important that we have this discussion. And yes, I think probably in all likelihood uh, we have some Fourth Amendment violations, probably lots of them. Uh, however, we just don't know the nature and the extent to which Snowden did damage our national uh, defense, inf or, excuse me, our intelligence gathering infrastructure. Uh, so I don't know how you can do the math to say that the benefit outweighs the And we danger. simply don't know. Ms. Rowley, what can Snowden do, if anything, at this point to win over his detractors in the U.S.? Um, I think that he doesn't have too many options other than to remain in Russia and hope that they do grant him an extension of his asylum. What he has been doing is uh, speaking out publicly through electronic appearances, and he's actually done a quite a good job of educating people about the current situation, as, as have um, prior whistleblowers. Uh, there was something I wanted to, to add in the uh, prior response, which was that prior whistleblowers, including, including Thomas Drake um, of the NSA, had tried to go to inspector generals, to the Pentagon, to even Congress. Congress, and unfortunately, they were retaliated against. That is the reason why whistleblowing is so important, because there are not really any good avenues right now. We can, we can hope that the new laws that have just passed might change that, but so far we, we, we're waiting for the proof of the pudding. Well, President Obama pledged to scale back domestic surveillance and spying on allies. The legislation, as you know, currently stalled in Congress. Was there any good that came from this, Mr. Holloway? 
you know, there's always good, I think, when, when you have a national discussion that is triggered by an event like this. And of course, this is so important and it impacts everybody's life every sure. day. And to the extent that we're here on national television discussing it and laws are being reformed, yes, I think in a nutshell, there can be some good to, that has come of all of this. Hopefully, all Americans are aware now of everything that they put out there electronically is uh, subject to being monitored. It really is unfortunate that we no longer have an expectation of privacy in things that we traditionally held to be very personal, however. So looking forward to the week ahead, Ms. Riley. Will, uh, will Edward Snowden get uh, an extension on his asylum in Russia? Um, it's, it seems likely um, the criteria is that his life is still in danger and nothing has changed this last year. So uh, it does look like he will be granted a, a continued asylum. If he doesn't, Mr. Holloway, what then? If, if he does get continued asylum, I think he, you're going to see him continuing to do what he's been doing. He's going to continue to go on television. He's going to give interviews to foreign or perhaps even U.S. media. He's going to uh, participate in hackers' conferences like he's done recently. Um, and so you'll still see him out in the public eye trying to raise awareness for what he at least sees as a very serious issue. And if it's denied? If it's denied? And uh, he's extradited back to the United States. He can, expect, he can expect to be fully prosecuted to the full extent of the law. We'll have to leave it there. And Colleen Rowley, retired FBI special agent and whistleblower, and Philip Holloway, founder of Holloway Law Group and former military attorney. Appreciate your time on the week ahead. Thank you, Thomas.